JB here, JB here, hope everyone's doing outstanding. April 29, 2024, about 2 o'clock here in this fine afternoon. Going to talk about the same stuff I talked about this morning. <laughs> just hope everyone's doing outstanding. So just the fir first couple things, take a look in the market. The SPY has been in chop mode and not the best thing for options. Of course, you want some volatility or at least I would like <laughs> slow gradual upside. But what we have today is a chop. 510.75 is the high. 510.509.01 is the low. So that's a 1.74 difference. We have moved three tenths of a percent trading range today. You can barely see the candle if you pull up the SPY. We had this a couple of weeks ago. I'm trying to think when that was. Maybe that was back in March. I'm trying to see if I see the candles where we had these tight trading ranges. And they they, they could be good or bad, right? I mean, it just means there's just a, a small tug of war. Maybe there's no decisiveness in, in the market moves, the buyers and sellers. And at some point, just to resolve. We have earnings, a lot of catalysts this week, so I'm sure the res resolution will happen this week, whether it's to over 512.50 or so, and then onward on a SPY or back to 504.50 and below, I guess, uh, you know, the jury's still out. The thing is, we're right at the 50-day moving average on the SPY, 510.39, uh, 59, excuse me. So that's where we've been finding resistance. We hit it one, two, three times. We hit 510.50 today. Hopefully, we can get a little burst at the end of the session, pulls, push through that and get that barrier out of the way. The, the thing is, though, we're finally 50 stocks are over the 50% of the S&P are over their 50-day moving average. And then, ironically enough, the S&P is right at its 50-day moving average. So a little push through. I think it'll bode well. Again, we have earnings. So Apple, Amazon, we have the Fed decision press conference Wednesday, 2 o'clock. Presser by Powell at 2.30. We also have the JOLTS report. And I, it's not a very talked about data, data point, but that's the openings. And when we've seen that decline we've seen a sell off in the markets because that's when we don't have as many job openings that's typically means the economy's strong so on and so forth so hopefully we get a little surprise the other way and that might paint a little bit of a picture for the friday jobs report which hopefully doesn't come in substantially above expectations we just had that gdp re read last week that came in lower than expectations and then we can find some footing and maybe start melting melting higher so that's the spy uh, I did it. And so Biogen was the name reported earnings last week. I used to trade Biogen a lot back in the day. It used to be a little more volatile. It's It had the, the backdrop of its Alzheimer's drug. And, you know, uh, there's always talk that they had shenanigans with their, <laughs> I hate using the word shenanigans, but I guess that's the only way you can describe it. Cahoots in cahoots, the Biogen's in cahoots with the FDA. And supposedly their Alzheimer's drugs, which was uh, didn't look like it should be approved, got approved. So I think their earnings that last week showed a little bit surprise beat on the revenue side. So I think a little surprising. And then you take a look at the stock. It was it was almost uh, 280 to 260 to start the year, all the way down to 180 right before earnings. And there's a stat I pull up the news. It's like 50% off. It's 52 week high, 60% off. It's 400 some. So it's substantially off its highs. And then you start looking at the chart. It looks like a pincher to me. So I was looking last week. It ran up the, the day of earnings or the day after earnings up to 207 or so, then back around to 205. I almost got some calls because I was looking at Pinterest. I'm like, ah, 220s, 230s for, for May look great. And then I passed. And then sure enough, some continuation on Friday. And then today, it, no news and was up 3%. So today, if it was up, it was at, I think it was 4.5%, up 4.5% at points so far today. And that was its biggest move in like three years. So there's no, no catalyst, no news to speak of. I just think... You look at the the stock, it's one of those mega cap bio names that, you know, just come back down to earth and people starting to look for opportunities in the med tech, in, in the biotech space as a whole. And Biogen probably is one of those names completely, I wouldn't say oversold, but <laughs> uh, now the RSI is back in the 60s. It was under 30 only a week, two weeks ago. So some of the other mega, like I used to look at Regeneron too, and Regeneron's actually doing well. So, I mean, Biogen's had a lot of hiccups. So I think that's some of the reason. But that's why I went and got the weeklies. I was actually looking for strikes for, uh, the May 17th, but they were kind of expensive. I think the 240s. So we'll see. My my speculative weekly strikes were almost were over 100% at points. Not that I, I wasn't planning on locking them in right away. So, of course, what does it do at about 12.15? The stock goes from 218.50 all the way down to 215.50 in a matter of like 15 minutes. So, uh, yeah, what are you going to do? So at some point, I'm not sure if I'll add strikes today. I'll probably wait tomorrow, Wednesday. If it doesn't find footing, I'll look for later date strikes. But I like this play. At least it's 50-day moving average is 212.56. I think once it gets over that, then you start looking at the 200-day moving average at 243. So that's Biogen. 
<clears throat> excuse me, uh, not going to really talk too much about here uh, on Riley. I was contemplating getting a position. I'll continue to pass. The two reasons. One is because the premiums are insane. So even if it does squeeze a little bit into the 40s or, or even close to 50, you probably it's going to be very hard to, to <laughs> I hate to use this analogy, milk milk the cow for some some cash, right? Because it could do it slowly, it could happen quick and then pull back and then the premiums are already elevated. So uh, all it's gonna take is a little bit of kind of what we're getting now, not non-directional choppy, small, low volume trading to start crushing the premiums and then both sides are gonna lose. So, um, so I'll probably pass on that, but you take a look today all the way up to 40 in the morning on strong volume and then it's just petering away i also looked at the option action and i still haven't had a chance to put it together because the only reason i would do it is if i did get a position or considering so it takes it's going to take me like a half hour to compile all the notional value of all the strikes uh, which i think will help paint the picture of how much money is on the line on both sides uh, puts calls and then short interest so I posted on Twitter about the May 17th strikes is over. It's like over 30 something million dollars just on the first glance of notional value, just on the call side. Uh, and then someone pointed out that some of those contracts were purchased before the big move. So they were got it, they are purchased at two or three bucks, they're up at 13 bucks. So that, that has to be baked in. But again, why would, if someone's in those, why would they lock them in? If, unless they were, you know, one of those people who are uh, gung ho, bullish the name, or at least not bearish the name which is kind of what the story is it's, i think people who are long the stock is not we're looking at riley and say it's the next big growth story we just think that there's a huge disconnect between the short interest and and the fundamentals of the stock which so rants for other days but if i do start looking at it i will uh compile that because i think it's definitely part of the story if the short interest remains the same and the option action remains the same something at some point something's got to give especially if the stock is trades in a tight range or starts to rally or even even starts to sell off but that's probably what a lot of the option action is positioned for before the 10k out was for for downside downside hasn't happened so whether it was the hedges will be seen okay so that's riley so then of course guys just quickly talk about trupanion was hoping it would finally break out 2460 or so it hit today did it hit 24 2465 and not much volume here it's not doing much but it's still pretty much flat up four cents I was hoping to get some or all my calls out and then just go for some later data strikes. I'll probably wait till tomorrow to do that. Still think this heads over 25 uh, before earnings, Thursday before the bell. Also, Lemonade reports earnings. So Lemonade has their new uh, pet insurance division. So I don't know if that's going to, uh, you know, add anything to to Trupani. Is it going to, they're going to be some sympathy move if the Lemonade shows a huge beat on their pet insurance. I don't know if they announce it item line how much revenue it is and year over year and things like that something i haven't looked at a lot of the bears cite lemonade as a reason to be negative true patent because lemonade uh if you go to google searches you can see lemonade has a huge share of all the searches for pet insurance but it's because that's what lemonade does right that, i mean that's how they get their business the online advertising google, google, all those <laughs> true panion does not does not spend a lot on the marketing side like that true panion spends the money getting the vets right if you bring a pet to the veterinarian what better person to get you in an insurance plan than the actual vet right the person who's it's like a doctor you have they have your trust per se right they have your probably your most precious item on the planet outside your kids but some people treasure their animals and pets more than their kids who are you not going to trust more than that person who's trying to take care of your pet so as some people look at that bearish and spin it say well lemonade has the biggest search history and and search trends and google trends for pet insurance but it's because it's only taken a snapshot of the people who are looking online for their advertising via lemonade and true panion that's not how they market and you see it on their their shareholder letters and their conference calls and you talk about all this how much it costs the, the acquisition costs and how long each average pet is on the insurance because of course the life of a pet is not 80 years old right some are seven some are 12 some are 15. So you have a lifetime value and then you have to, all the math. There's a lot of math that goes into it, more than I look at. So I don't know the, all the details, but I do know, you know, I'm just saying in a nutshell, hopefully if there is a nice number that it just bodes well for Trupanion, which, uh, yeah. All right, so enough on that Trupanion rant. I, I'm still looking at PayPal and Square and PayPal reports tomorrow before the bell. And I was looking at the calls and, you know, as much as I want to, uh, you know, look to add something, it's it's like for me the risk award i would have to go up to like almost 80 bucks the 80 strikes are 21 by 23 those would be a nice lotto i mean if it goes up 
goes up 10%. So then it's at 74. Those might be a double. I'm just not sure. I'm, uh, I don't have conviction just yet. So um, in lieu of that, I'll probably just try and do the squares. Square similar situation. I'll probably have to go up to the 90s just to get an inexpensive speculative lotto trade and then hope and I'll think that it's going to rally. You know, square looks pretty good on the setup. If you if you look at the chart, it's 50, it's not at a, it's 50 day yet. The 50 days at 77.21. So maybe it melts up to that, breaks over that before earnings Thursday after the close. And then you can get some get some premium build on the 90 strikes. And then I probably get 92 strikes and then lock some or all of those in before earnings. And then if, you, if you're able to lock some in for 100%, Help hold some on for lotto if you have the guts <laughs> and uh yeah but the the only other issue is the reports have to close on thursday which means friday is the option expiration so you only have 24 more hours of trading so anyway that's kind of the thought process behind square and paypal uh last but i wouldn't say last but not least there's other things like dell's looking actually uh it's been choppy so tell all the way up to 127.40 at the open reverses course in a matter of about five minutes oh not well 127.40, then down to 123.50, then back up to 127, and then it's been chopping around. Just can't really find enough buyers to break through. So I don't know if this is just some chop before the final resolution to getting over 130, but a little bit frustrating to watch this. I'm not going to add any June strikes just yet, but I still love Dell here. Uh, VKTX, not much else to hit here on VKTX. Only up to 77, down to 73. Then you had a piece out. Um, I don't know what publication came out with the data. Data points saying people are uh, quitting Ozempic and weight loss drugs. I'm like, wow, what a great headline. Because like you look at NVO and LLY, they've added hundreds of billions of dollars in market cap just in the last year and doubled their revenue. I think NVO went from 8 billion to like 19 billion and people are quitting the GLP-1 drugs. So just a because of price, side effects, things like that. But just imagine when prices start to come down just a little bit and or insurers really start to to cover it so and again as i can go on and on about vktx but a lot of people i think when um when nvo came out with their oral G, glp1 data they didn't mention anything about adverse effects and that's the big you see it all the time now on, on anybody who publishes negative pieces on glp1 which a lot of time they're doing they're doing just to get clicks right people aren't going to click the ones that say, wow, lose a lot of money and you're going to lose a lot of weight on Ozempic or, you know, using Zepound or Wachovia or whatever, because people already know that pretty much, right? But what they don't know is you can, wow, I can, I can have diarrhea. I can have, uh, go have surgery to have some, my intestine, whatever, all these negative articles come out. So when you see the publication from NVO, when they did their oral data, they didn't, they didn't give any line of sight or any color on adverse effects. That's like a big deal in this day and age, especially with these drugs. And you look at VKTX, they have the, the best in regards to adverse effects, meaning not many, right? So when people talk about upset stomachs, nausea, uh, th things like that, the VKTX studies so far have been best in class with that. So you couple the adverse effects with not only best in class with the adverse effects, but best in class and possible weight loss, you start extrapolating the GLP-1 data, the oral data, and the study was only for three months and you start looking, if you just did the math and said, if they did it for 52 weeks or 48 weeks, like these other studies did, they're going to far surpass what they've gotten. So anyway, those rants for other days, but you look at that article and I just kind of laughed. I said, wow, the good thing about VKTX is they're not going to have the adverse effects and they're going to help bring the pricing down. So it's just more reason, in my opinion, to be bullish these names, which brings me to turn, turn uh, pharmaceuticals. I had some April strikes. I locked some in for, I think I, 100%. I have to go back and look at the exact thing. Then, of course, the rest expired. And then, actually, I locked some in that I had more. And so the, the freebies and the rest expired. And I'm just watching today. And it's it trades less than cash, right? It has its potential GLP-1 data coming out, oral data in the second half of 2024. So it's small cap. I think it's under the radar. You had that piece come out from, uh, I forget who it was. Uh, was it Barron? Someone came out with an article. Or maybe it was Market Watch. This small cap is ready to fly after a GLP-1 data. And then you have every analyst, which their price targets are $16, $18, $20 on turn. And it doesn't mean that's where it's going, but I just think there's, there's an opportunity. Especially now where the premiums have kind of come out of the call. So looking at June and July strikes, don't be surprised if you see me add some crazy ones today. Not crazy, 750s maybe, even some, some later dated 10s. Because um, I think it offers good risk works. It trades a cash. So... And it's not, they don't just have the GLP-1. There's other 
um, I, I forget what uh, the two other studies they have. Uh, so that's turn. And after the close today, we have PayPal, oh, not after the close today, uh, tomorrow, PayPal, Eli Lilly reports in the morning, morning McDonald's, triple 3M, triple M, I call them, Coca-Cola. And then after the close, it's going to be crazy. So SMCI, which is probably the, I, would, I guess you would call it the hottest stock outside of the video, is going to report. You have Amazon. It's rare that Amazon reports earnings and it's going to be overshadowed by a, a pretty new company. Not new company, but new to being in the spotlight. AMD, Riot, Starbucks, Pinterest reports. So definitely going to be an interesting after-hour session tomorrow. And then Wednesday we have the Fed, so that'll be fun as well. I think that's all my rant today. I, I mean, other names I was looking at. Uh, Square. Sorry, we talked about Square, Biogen. Um, trying to think. So, oh, not, not much to hear, add here on Baidu. It seems like, you know, I talked about it on the pre-market rant. It's, it seems like every time it seems it, it gets positive news or it looks like it wants to break out, it just just it just can't get out of this trading range. And let's see what it's at. Uh, I'm trying to see what the high was. The last move. So the last move it went up to one at the start of April. One 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 oh nine twenty five. And then all the way back down to ninety eight. And now it's rallying again. So last time it went up in February, it went up to one fourteen, then back down to ninety eight. And then the time before that it went up to one eleven and then back down to a hundred. And then back in well, the last time it was really up here was January twelfth, one sixteen fifty. So that's pretty much the high for for the year so at some point you have to think it breaks out to, you know to be approved by the by the china government for ai being one of the six companies or something like that then you have this news with tesla and you know they're on the you know the, the market for ai is so huge to think that if they're the leader in china and tesla is pretty much putting their stamp of approval on them and people argue with that what have you but i just i'm like how is this thing not trading higher and some of it's the macro right the, the china market and all that stuff so kind of on edge you look at a name like alibaba it trades at like this insane pe ratio i don't know it was like three three times earnings or something now i don't know so people all look at it and think it's the cheapest uh, stock on the planet but then it keeps it keeps trading here so and then you have the insider buys on on baba the billions of dollars so rants for other days i'm not saying i'm getting long china stocks or china adr or any of this stuff i just it's just things that kind of things that make you go hmm you know when you see Baidu and say, why is this thing not at 120 yet? It's probably maybe a huge, someone, a huge fund that's still trying to get out. Ah, who knows? All right, folks, we got uh, one hour, 40 minutes to the close. Biogen just went down to 215 here on the nose. Hopefully that finds some footing. Just need three bucks. Give me 218 by the bell. I'll be happy camper. Let's have a great day, folks. Rock and roll.